Hey guys, Woodruff here. So we're talking about medical treatments for fracture. So now let's, we just talked about reduction. Now that one's a little bit more complicated. Hopefully the rest of these will be a little bit more simple. Um, just know that you don't have to know crazy in depth and understand the actual how in the world, the path though of how this works versus like, what am I going to do as the nurse? So that should always be where you're focusing as you're learning about these. Um, so the next type of device or treatment that we can use is what's called traction. So what traction does is um, effectively, it's another way to either short term or more long term um, create alignment in uh, what do you call it, a patient who's had a fracture. Effectively, what it is, as you can see in this picture, is either through a pin or pins in a joint or through on the outside skin by putting a boot on the patient. Um, effectively, it's a pulling force where there's this pulley on the end of the bed that has, you can, you can see it in this one, you can't see it in this one, there's a weight on the end of this, and it provides like a traction um, that's going to, and I know that, that if you don't know what attraction is, that definitely makes it harder to explain, but provides a, just think of it as a pulling force. And so think of this, like if, if this is my arm, let's say it's broken, a pulling force is going to straighten it to keep it straight, to keep it aligned. Um, so that pulling force or the traction helps to create alignment. So this is great to actually, um, you know, for realignment, but the other benefits of it is that it decreases pain and muscle spasm. And um, like I mentioned, helps to prevent a lot of injuries. Because remember everything, like a lot of the complication, not everything, but a lot of the complications are related to, hey, is this bone realigned yet or not? Um, so um, there's two types of traction. Seems like there's two types of everything, right? This is a great thing for your note card. Um, so there's skin and skeletal traction. Skin traction is like this picture in this upper um, section where um, this is and for skin traction. Sorry, there's something wet on my floor. It's like there's always something in my house that's falling apart. When I'm trying to do these videos. Maybe I'm crazy. Or maybe someone peed on the floor. Lord knows my life is a mess. Anyway, um, so skin traction effectively is more of a short term traction. It's like this boot. This is what we call like a buck's traction. Um, it can be tape, boots, splint, and it's something that's directly on the skin. Um, there's usually less weight with skin traction. Usually when we do five to 10 pounds. And like I said, it's only used for a short period of time, like one to three days. Um, so usually this is used like preoperatively before someone, like maybe someone has gotten that closed reduction and they're waiting to go get their open reduction and um, they might have this on in between. Um, and so effectively it's going to just provide some temporary traction. I remember traction, pulling, straightening force um, in order to um, help with their pain and spasm and also immobilize things. Um, this other type of traction down here is what's called skeletal traction. Now, usually, I mean, some hospitals like where I work, they can do it bedside, but usually most of the time you have to go to a surgery in order to get this done. Um, and this might be done post-operatively. Um, and uh, this is where there's actually pins or wires in the bone itself. Um, and then the weight is attached. Now, this provides more long-term realignment. Sorry, I just hear my husband. He's listening to a podcast. Um, uh, for more long-term realignment um, and allows for a more stable pulling force. And so um, there's more weight that can be applied anywhere from five to 45 pounds. An example of this, like this top one, I said an example is Buck's traction. Um, uh, this bottom one and uh, an example or a name you might hear it called as balanced suspension traction. Um, so this one, it's not rubbing against the skin, but it actually has a pin going in through the bone. So we'll talk about on the next slide about like pros and cons of both or how do I as the nurse management so manage this. So again, don't spend too much time or get drive yourself too crazy about these different types versus, okay, what does that mean for me as the nurse? Like what's the big picture here? So as the nurse, for someone who's in skin traction, there is a device that is rubbing against or putting pressure on their skin. Um, so they need regular skin assessments because the highest risk they have here is skin breakdown. And your new book says like every two to four hours, um, good skin assessments, um, monitor their pressure points. So if they have the skin or the bucks traction, even though it's temporary or short term, I want to monitor closely and watch their skin. On the other hand, skeletal traction, that's the one that has the pins. I'm going to be more worried about infection for these patients. Anytime a patient has an open source where um, they have actual like, um, you know, bugs, infection can get in from the outside world to the inside of their body, I'm always going to be worried more about infection. 
So for a skeletal traction patient, I'm less worried about skin breakdown because there's not the stuff rubbing on their skin. I'm more worried about infection. So performing pin care every shift and pin care varies depending on your facility, but usually you're going to get like a Q-tip and um, cleanse with chlorhexidine or sometimes we even use like those, um, you know, those chlorhexidine swabs. Um, we rinse with sterile saline usually and dry with a gauze. Um, some, some hospitals, you know, like the hospital I work at, depending on the doctor, a lot of times they actually like to even put bio patches like the stuff that we put on um, pick lines and central lines as like an antimicrobial we put that around the pin site just to um, keep it as clean as possible um, for both uh, both types you know for as the nurse I want to make sure that it's in correct alignment so this is where I'm kind of looking starting at the top and I have a video on the next slide that maybe if you want to kind of watch um, she's a nursing student so you know going through her assessment of a patient interaction it might help to get you more in the brain of like what exactly am I looking for in a patient that's in traction I think I'm a visual person so it helps me um, but as the nurse, I want to make sure their leg should look, or if it's their leg, because like you can also have skeletal traction. You can't have arm traction. We usually talk about leg traction when we're talking about here, but you can't have any type of traction um, where you can have traction in most joints, I should say. Um, my job as a nurse is to make sure everything's in correct alignment. So if it's my arm and my arm is not straight and aligned, that's going to be a problem. It should be in a uh, straight angle. Um, and then it's also my job as the nurse to make sure that the traction stays constant. So the weight should not touch the floor. Um, so um, the weights that it's providing, like my body is providing one part of the traction and then the weight's providing the other one. So like if they, if this patient, like let's say this patient, the, um, the weight is pulled and it's good. If I remove that weight, then this is going to lose its, you know, the thing that's pulling it or aligning, it's losing its pulling force. So we never take the weights off the floor, it should be constant. Now, if you go and find the video that I have on the next slide, because again, I'm not going to play it. Um, you may notice that there's a time that she takes the weight off the floor and she like removes the Buck's traction and looks under the skin. And that may be in real life, a part of your nursing assessment, but in perfect nursing school world, we never move the weights off the floor. Um, so just know that's like, it's a big test taking thing. Always make sure the weights are not touching the floor. They're not in the bed. They should always remain constant. We never touch it. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's, that was my scary demon voice. Hopefully it didn't scare you. Um, but yeah, so that's just something to kind of keep in mind um, for both types of traction, regardless um, that we always want to keep that weight force pulling down because, um, you know, if I let go of that, I could end up, you know, causing a lot more harm, putting them at risk for complications. Uh, but yeah, so skin traction, skin breakdown, skeletal traction, worry about those pin sites infection. Um, and then for both weights off the floor, make sure everything's in alignment. And then the other other thing is just, you know, pain management and making sure I want to make sure that their pain should be improving or if they're having spasms. So yeah, I think this is a like um, some other university. Um, I want to say it's, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to lie into the wrong thing. Let's see. Oh yeah. LSU. I want to say it was Louisiana. LSU School of Nursing, their um, buck skin track. And this was a great video. I went a, like about one minute in is where she starts to really assess what she needs to assess. Um, so if you want to take a look at that, you're more than welcome to. All right, so I'm also gonna include in this video stuff about fixators. Um, so fixators are something else that can be done. And of course, there's two types. Are you guys kind of sensing the pattern? Um, there's two types of, uh, of a um, fixators. And so fixators can be internal. And we looked at an internal fixator already in that picture. So remember we talked about open reduction internal fixation. So that fixator, uh, you see, you kind of, things are all sloshing together around here. Um, so what that is talking about is, is that when they have that surgery where they, we open them up and this is the doctor, of course, open them up and put the pins, rods, screws, plates, whatever might be needed to keep everything together. Um, that, um, an internal fixator, you can't see it. Like I can't, like I have internal fixation in my leg, but if you look at me, you can't see my internal fixation. It's internal. Um, so there's, there's, um, you know, from joint injuries and other things. And that's a different story. If we ever go out for a drink, I can tell you about the time I fell down the world's smallest hill. Um, and then also the time that, um, I sacrificed myself to, um, uh, rage and revenge and revenge and resentment in middle school tennis, um, versus a girl that very much deserved it. So it was worth the injury because she deserved it and I still lost, but if I would have won, I would have been triumphant, but that's a different story for a different day. Um, so anyway, 
but you can't see all of my internal hardware. Um, that's because they opened me up, they put the internal hardware in, and then they closed me. Well, um, the injuries I had did not have a lot of little broken pieces. It wasn't too complex. So internal fixation worked for me. Other patients, they have more um, complicated injuries. They may have more fragments, um, or maybe I'm not going to be able to put a cast or traction or something else on this patient. Um, and so it's, it's a doctor choice. You don't have to understand why a patient would have one versus the other. All you have to understand is the difference in care. Um, but um, an external fixator is when you can see it, it's on the outside. So look at this bottom picture. This is an external fixator. And imagine having this on the outside of someone's leg. It's definitely a little bit of a challenge um, as the nurse to make sure when you're turning this patient, taking care of them. Um, but um, effectively, um, these metal pins are inserted into the bone and then there's external rods stabilizing them, keeping them in place. So with an internal fixator, you don't know that a patient has that unless you have their x-ray images or they tell you. An external fixator, you can see it and it's your job as the nurse to take care of it. And only in the sense that just like we talked about with the skeletal traction, there's going to be um, you know, these rods on the outside and there's going to be a portal for bacteria to get in. So what do you think I'm worried about? You're, you guessed it, infection. I was about to say you're right and you guessed at the same time if you're wondering why I look like I had a stroke. Um, so yes, so infection is going to be my biggest concern. So therefore the priority action for a patient with an external fixator is going to be pin care. Um, so you have to be super careful. You have to give a lot of support with these. Like, you know, if you're wondering like, how do you turn these patients? We put pillows and stuff and just support the best that we can. Now this isn't like traction where they have to stay perfectly aligned and straight because these um, pin, uh, the pins and rods, the internal pins and then the external rods are helping to keep things in place. But um, I definitely want to prevent infection and, you know, of course, decrease pain and other stuff. So sometimes, especially if they have one on both legs, it can be very bulky um, and you don't want them putting pressure or pushing in the wrong places. So it can be kind of a little chaotic, but um, pillows save the world. So um, is that all I have for that one? Yeah, that's all I have for that one. Um, but yeah, so as a whole, um, there is, hold on a sec, now cat fights. Um, as a whole, there is, um, yeah, because I moved locations, by the way, in case you're wondering. So there's always some sort of dumpster fire in my life. So now it's just cat fight time. Um, so, but this video is almost over and then I can separate them. Um, so, um, there is skin traction, worried about skin breakdown, you know, keep, uh, watch closely and make sure that they are not having issues there. Skeletal traction, pin care, watch for infection. Um, and remember traction is used as a pulling force to align before and after surgery, internal and external fixators, internal fixators are, uh, more permanent pin, pins, plates, rods, screws, um, to maintain. Um, you know, uh, bones that have gotten out of place. So this is more of your long-term fix. So I think a fixator is a little more long-term fix. And um, then an external fixator is um, something that you can, um, internal, you can't see it at all. External, you can see it and you are going to do good pin care and watch um, those pin sites and do that pin care. We talked about the same stuff you would do for a um, skeletal traction patient you would do for external. And just to clarify, because I know that I just said that fixators, long-term fix, internal fixators are a long-term fix. External fixators don't, these patients don't keep this on forever. It's just temporary, um, but they can be, they are used sometimes longer term um, than other things. So they might have this on for so many weeks um, or months, just depending on the patient. So anyway, focus on the nursing care. Don't do, get too crazy in your head. Um, if it helps you, you know, watch some videos and stuff about these to kind of visualize what it is. Um, but just think of all these as devices and ways that we can keep things um, stabilized and aligned so that the bone can heal. Next will be all about um, mobilization. That's the next step. See you for that one.